Uh, hi, this is Joe again with another review. Uh, for the sake of this film, since it's uh, getting closer to the can to the 90th Academy Awards, I like, it's gonna be a disaster. To watch this thing. Uh, so I decided to do a well, well, it wasn't a movie that actually won the Academy Award for Best Picture, but it won eight Academy Awards, including Best Director, Best Actress, Best Supporting Actor, which is the 1972 movie Cabaret. So I Liza Minnelli and Joe Gray, and of course this is one of the most famous and one of the better, I want to say one of the better uh, musicals, but, but this, the songs were famous and it was really the movie that made Liza Minnelli's career, even though she had a career already in the 60s, following in the footsteps of her legendary mother. Julie Gorn, and this movie did ca came out like three years after her mother had had died, so it was really a film that really made her career for the rest of, rest of her life. And and uh, this movie won didn't win eight, eight Oscars, and the best director went to uh, Bob Fosse, the famous uh, I guess choreographer, because they're more famous for doing the choreography for um, Damn Yankees and and which is back in the 50s. So, and he became movie director, and his first movie was Sweet Charity, which was, you know, was a few years earlier, it was a bomb. So he did this movie, and this became a big hit, and was, like I said earlier, won eight Oscars. So this movie starts in, starts in 1931 Berlin, when the Nazis who were starting, Nazi party was first coming into power in, in Germany, and it has, Deals with a singer named Sally Bowles, played by Liza Minnelli, and Liza Min and Liza was smoking hot in this movie. I mean, I mean you, you, I mean you have to be either blind or gay, not to be attracted to Liza Minnelli in this film. And knowing which that she play a performer in there, but she's also kind of a slut uh, because she screwed anything that that has a, a dick. Excuse my language, but but, but, but she did. She, she had sex with any guy that she, that, that she could get into bed with. And one day she got kind of attracted by a new roommate who had an apartment, had a room in the same boarding house that she had in Germany. And they had, you know, pretty much had a love affair. And meanwhile, there was a third guy in the picture who, uh, the first guy I mentioned, uh, was giving English uh, lessons to. Because this guy was British. And he gave her, gave this other guy lessons how to speak properly in English. And so you have possibly a three way going on. And there was one particular sequence where all three of them were dancing in, together. And it's kind of a play. Maybe you have like a sexual, sexual relationship with the two guys. But this was 1972. Uh, I mean, this movie was made in 2018. You're definitely going to have a scene with the two guys having getting together. But in 1972, you really don't, didn't have a scene like that in a movie in 1972. So it didn't happen. It didn't, it didn't happen. But it's like implied, maybe these two guys would get together and have a sexual relationship. Uh, but uh, that's what uh, that's what they implied. And of course, the movie, I mean, the movie does drag quite a bit. I mean, there was a, it's over two hour movie, it's a two hour, six minute movie, but it does, uh, seem to drag a bit. Of course the thing that sells this movie is of course the musical sequences. And of course a bunch of the mo songs, uh, even though it is based on the Broadway show of the same name, the only actor from the original Broadway show that was in the movie was Joe Gray. And he gave a great performance. Of course Joe Gray is the father of Jennifer Gray from Dirty Dancing. And he gave such a great performance that he earned an Oscar for, uh, a Best Supporting Oscar for this movie. And I think he got Best Actor Oscar. And no, no, I think the Oscar went to, uh, uh, for Best Acting was Marlon Brando for The Godfather. So, but, uh, that's probably why the movie didn't win for Best Picture because it was well up against the Godfather, the first Godfather film. Uh, but, and the funny thing is, the Godfather didn't win for Best Director, Kevin Ray did. And of course, this movie has so many signature songs that Liza Minnelli has performed to this, to this very day on stage. 
Crying Across Cabaret, which is a, a signature song. But also I had a song, Money, Money, Money. And of course, uh, and maybe this time. Those, those are the three songs that Nigel uh, from this movie. The Nigel Minnelli has performed to, to a very date to, 20, to over 40, what is it now, 46 years later. Performing those songs. And those are well, some of the signature tunes, other than New York, New York, of course. And you can see she did a great job. I mean, I mean, she is beautiful to look at. And you know, in those days, she, she was. She was quite young. Uh, I don't think she was even 30 years old then. Uh, when, when she, when she, I think she might have been as old as maybe 38 years old, maybe. Uh, I, think she, I think she might have been like 28 or 30 years old when she did this film. So, uh, she gave a great, and Joe Gray was terrific as, as the MC. I mean, that, that's all he really did think he had was introducing the acts and performing on stage in the Kit Kat Club, which was the cab, which was the cabaret in this, in the movie cabaret. And of course, he had signature tunes as well, Joe Gray, which which he also did a terrific job on. Uh, of course, the song, opening song, uh, "Welcome," he speaks with the gym. Sings with a German accent, which he did a terrific job, job on. Because actually, he's not originally German; he's American. But he does everything with a German accent. And he does a terrific, terrific job with the makeup, and, and it's implied by Joe Gray's performance that he was a homosexual. But you know, the way he moves, the way he spoke, the way he moves on stage, does all these crazy, you know, motions like this. You know, the way he sways on stage. You could argue maybe maybe he was a homosexual, but uh, but his, his songs were classical songs as well. He said, "Oh, and the girls are beautiful. The orchestra is beautiful, and even the audience is beautiful. And the orchestra. Is I mean, he calls everybody beautiful in the film, or or darling. And well, Liza Minnelli is not better either because she calls everybody darling in the, the whole um, the whole film. But but of course." Uh, getting back, of course, to the main plot where Jet, where Liza Minnelli and and this British guy was li living in Berlin was uh, the guy that got on pretty much, and actually, of course, it's implied and so they didn't show a full on sex scene. Uh, but of course, later on, it turns out that, that Liza Minnelli was pregnant, and, just, and, she, and she actually goes, God damn it, I'm pregnant. I mean, it's very weird to, to actually hear, of course, probably in real life. Or when Liza Minnelli was not, was not performing a stage somewhere, um, she she probably uh, does curse curse like a drunken sailor, which is kind of funny to say because she's she really is drunk. Well, unfortunately, I mean I, I mean I am a fan of Liza Minnelli as a performer, but to find out that she drinks on the side, just like her mother did back in the day, it's really hard to. Uh, you know, to hear that type of stuff of a performer you admire when you like. And, and but in this movie, it's kind of funny to hear a curse like that. Um, talking about, uh, it's one scene, Chris, where he's talking about screwing and, you know, boozing it up and all that type of And here, there's one night when he says shit in one, in one scene. And when she missed it to her boyfriend, and she was pregnant, she goes, God damn it, I'm pregnant. And, and of course, they were, it's also implied that she had an abortion, which you don't, which of course you don't see, but it's implied that she mentions to the guy that she had an abortion. Uh, she goes, oh, why did you do that? I was looking for, I mean, looking forward to being a husband. We didn't discuss it. I mean, we couldn't discuss it. And she didn't tell him that she was going to have an abortion. She just went out and did it. She paid him, she sold her full coat to pay for the abortion. It was very expensive. And... And then, of course, not too long after that, he leaves. He goes back, goes back to England, and she goes out and continues to perform. And she performs this signature song in the in the movie. She sings cabaret, and that's the only time we actually see her stomach in in, in any movie that she had ever been in. Uh, it was sure she was wearing uh, fringes and a midriff. We he said, "Hey, you see a little uh, tummy action," but by uh, not by uh, Liza Minnelli. But of course, you never really see her in anything really, really anything sexy in any other movie world that she's ever had. Including, of course, the author 
uh, starring an author, when you're in the Muppet, uh, Muppet Sink Manhattan, which is, I think, might have been the last movie she ever starred in. Uh, I, think she, I think she might have been in uh, the Sex and the City uh, movie, the second one, Sex and the City 2. But you, you never really see Nathan Minnelli dre dressed in a sexual way at all. Uh, except maybe except in, in this role, I don't know if this was her first movie role. I'm not too sure on that. But like you said earlier, this was a movie that made her really made her movie career. And it's really great to see her, you know, young and younger. I think she's in the I think she's in the seventies now. So so to see her forty six years younger, I, mean, I don't think she's even thirty yet. Yet in the, in the, by the time she did this movie. And to see her, she, she looks, you know, gorgeous to look at. Now, that's like her mother back in the day. She was hot. Uh, Judy Garland was also pretty hot back, you know, back in the day. Especially when she did The Wizard of Oz and The Store is Born. And <clears throat> one of the other movies she did, uh, I remember in St. Louis. I said, I said, I won't previously review those films. So check them out if you have not seen them. And so, for, and for Liza Minnelli to do this film, it's really... You know, of course, actually, of course, she could do a musical. Uh, I think she only did one other musical in her career, and, and then she she did New York, New York, and she starred with Roy Schneider from from you know, from Jaws, in that film. And of course, that was the whole other thing that she did came from New York, New York, and she was the first one to. You know, people remember the fake and from version, but Liza Minnelli was the first one to sing New York, New York. Uh, but Cabaret was really her signature movie role. And the best performance she gave, and she deserved the Oscar in that. Uh, and she did a great job, so did Joe, Joe Gray. But the rest of the, rest of the characters, he just do away with. And there was some plot I should mention uh, before I sign off. There was a, the German guy that was getting English uh, lessons from the British, uh, from Sally's boyfriend. Uh, he found out that he was in love with a Jewish girl. And there's one scene where he actually rapes her. Uh, it's not, you didn't see it, but it was actually was a rape scene that was implied. And and then he found, and then the German guy found out that he was actually was, he actually was Jewish and he had to keep that hidden. Because actually, like I said earlier, that's when the Nazis were starting to take over Germany. And of course, they were starting to kill off uh, you know, destroying Jewish businesses and rounding Jews up and preparing to put them in concentration camps and stuff like that. And of course, we all know what happened then. Six, over at least six million Jews were killed by Hitler. And of course, in the end, the movie is implied that the Nazis took over uh, Germany by, by the time the end of the movie comes. Uh, like I said, it is a good movie, and especially if you have to be a musical movie fan. It's going to say it's the first time I've actually seen the movie myself. Uh, I just saw it like last night because TCM saw your whole thing with with uh, 31 Days of Oscar, and to see him do these movies is really really great to great to see this stuff. The, these musical movies or these movies that won a bunch of Academy Awards like like uh, Kevin Ray did, and it actually won eight. And can't, can't believe this movie movie actually won eight. Now I knew that Ju Liza Minnelli and almost said Julie Garner. Now Liza Minnelli and Joe Gray won won Oscars, but they didn't know that. It was one for Best Director, Best Cinematography, the, the song, original song. Uh, and then, and looked at it on Wikipedia, but it didn't say what song it won, actually won the Oscar for Best Song. But, uh, it won, it actually won the Oscar. And, and it should also mention that Joe Gray was one, is one of the few actors who won an Oscar and a Tony. Or should I say a Tony first in the Oscar, who playing the same role in a movie musical. And what Rex Harrison did for My Fair Lady, won the Tony on Broadway uh, for playing uh, Professor Higgins, and he won the Oscar for My Fair, for the movie version of My Fair Lady. You also had Yul Brenner did the same thing for uh, The King and I. And of course he had Joe Gray, so he actually had at least, three, I think he had him about four or five times total. That an actor won the Tony and the Oscar for playing the same role in, in a musical. Uh, so, and Joe Gray was, was well, I, th I think the last person to 
I, I'm not sure if Joe Gray was the last person to do so. Uh, but uh, you, you didn't have the main movie movie schools coming after that. And then you had a bunch of only part of the city, you know, like in Chicago. And Kevin Zia Jones won the Oscar uh, for playing for being in, Chica- in the movie version of Chicago, but nobody from the original movie, original Broadway show was in this, uh, Chicago was in the movie version when it came out in 2002. Because the movie, the, the original Broadway show was in the 70s. Uh, not today, with the, you had uh, the one from Cheers in, in the revival. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, or you had BB New with the revival, one one the Tony, but she didn't appear in the, in the musical in the movie version. But 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 anyway, Joe Gray was one of the, one of the people, one of the few actors who won the Tony and the Oscar for 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 a movie for a musical, and it was really he gave a great performance. I mean, he stole the movie. I mean, I'd rather see see him and like I said, I thought most of the story with with him. Uh, or Joe Gray's character and Nancy Minnelli more. I didn't expect they had the, like, the little love story with her getting the abortion and all that other stuff and went along with it. It was mostly uh, the two, two of them together performing in the in this nightclub and then the Nazis take over. That's how I th- kind of like what the music was. And I expected that type of plot in, in Cabaret and I just didn't get there. So let me review of the movie Cabaret. Please click on the video, please read it. Feel free to comment on Please subscribe to my channel. Please forward this video on your Facebook pages. You can check out all my reviews on you know, on my YouTube channel at rallyc.com. That's all W-D-Y to the C.com. On the homepage is my reviewer, Christine Moore. And please check out all of his videos on his website. Thank you for watching and catch you next time.